Hello everybody, welcome to The Daily Sip. My name is Oliver, my mission is to bring you closer to organic Japanese green tea and today we're gonna dive into matcha. Matcha is actually nothing more than just a finely ground sort of or kind of green tea and uh, we're gonna dive today into a special matcha which is called koicha and here we have a comment of uh, one somebody from our community saying that koicha actually makes me high. So maybe let's dive a little bit into this topic and see why this tea can give you the feeling of being high. So when we talk about matcha, there are different kinds of preparations. So that we grow back a little bit and go from the typical preparation, which is called usucha, to the koicha method. The koicha actually um, is a thick kind of paste of matcha which is mostly done during a tea ceremony if it is prepared. So it's not something very typical green tea starting or green tea starter or people who dive into the world of matcha go into. It's rather something which where you already need a little bit of an acquired green tea taste. But as soon as you are interested or you really want to dive into this, it is quite an exploration. So what do we actually need to prepare this koicha? So nothing else than for a normal preparation of the matcha green tea. So we have here the chawan, so the matcha bowl. We have the matcha, which I showed you before. We have the well-soaked chasan. One minute of soaking in the water is enough. It doesn't have to be hot. It can be cold water here. I use now uh, warm water or lukewarm water. And we have the sifter, usual suspect. And we have the spoon. Here you can have a beautiful, sophisticated bamboo spoon or you just take a coffee spoon, which you anyway have at home, or in this case, a teaspoon. <coughs> Good, so what do we do? We're gonna take the matcha and we're gonna use more powder. <coughs> so, so what do we do? We just take, instead of just one teaspoon, in this case, two grams, I take the double of the amount <coughs> and we are just sifting this. So you can see how much this is, it takes not a lot of time, so it's super easy to do. Some seconds where you just have to sift it through and why do we do this? It's because of the crumbs which can form with the humidity. We don't want them, we don't want any kind of small particles in our matcha. We want really a fine, beautiful powder. And uh, you can see it actually becomes a fine, beautiful powder. So if I can show you this just here, so you see how beautiful um, this powder gets in terms of fine little powder pieces. And now we're gonna just add a little bit of water. So this is very important. We are having a spectator here. So a small bee is flying around and we're just gonna pour 40 milliliters, which is kind of a little bit more than one ounce. And it's very little water we put in. And then we're gonna start to sift it. So we're gonna just turn the chasen in here so you can see it. And then we're just gonna have a very, very thick matcha. Then we're just gonna whisk a little bit. So I use now four grams. You can even go thicker um, some people go up to 8 grams, um, which in my opinion come, becomes a little bit much. But uh, here on this day I was going for the 4. So you see, this is when you see this beautiful kind of a little bit uh, greener top of the whisk. And this is exactly when uh, the whisk has been used for koicha. And now let's see how thick this is. So you really can see how thick now this powder is and it really becomes a little bit this um, nearly gluey form and the longer actually you let it sit the more the thicker it will become so here from a close-up again so very very beautiful thick 
matcha and this is the koicha so actually super easy to prepare when uh, you want to drink the koicha and now let's talk a little bit why this tea can actually get you high but first I really want to try it so they're really thick it's really a strong strong boost of taste you need to take a matcha which is very very sweet I suggest you you take an um, Okumidori this one is here is a high grade Okumidori matcha from Mr. Nakai but you can also go for a Saimidori but the Abokita is a little bit too kind of too astringent it's quite potent in its kind of vegetal taste profile but it is very very strong on this more astringent note making it when you prepare it as an usucha quite fresh a little bit citrusy but as a koicha not really matching already this one has quite a potent astringent note with it so even with this one here there is a little bit the effect that you are a little bit more um, on the stronger stringent side so if you really want to go for typical culture then try to go for the samidori this would at least be my suggestion this one is very okay to do uh, the koicha but it's not specifically made for koicha preparation which i'm getting a little bit and this a little bit more stringent notes but there's still a very potent green kind of soft um, smooth note of the Okumidori it's a little bit a uh, cashew nutty flavor profile mixed with quite an uh, intense ripe spinach uh, flavor profile it's not something you can do every day and certainly it is very strong in terms of in terms of caffeine so here when we dive into here I use the double of caffeine with the four grams normally two grams you're around 70 to 80 to 80 milligrams which is a coffee cup but now I have here a double shot or a double espresso which is then the level of this one so but you can see it really gets out very very little by little and then you can just finish it with a little of patience with a little bit of just calm and time for yourself where you enjoy this now we get into the topic and i already get a little bit calmer with this into the topic of why actually this matcha is a good option when you want to feel a little bit kind of alleviated and the reason why people say that it actually uh, gives them the feeling of being drunk or of being like much more kind of in the zen uh, phase is that with the green tea you don't only get the caffeine but you actually also get the l-theanine which is helping you to break through the blood brain barrier and then triggering the alpha wave so it's a little bit like when you do a meditation session you feel this calmness this kind of a little bit floating um, feeling which you get when when you're just at the end of a meditation and this is what this tea is pushing a lot and that's why you are getting a little bit this feeling of getting high where you have really this kind of super relaxed state and you just feel that the world is perfect so that's a little bit the reason why actually this tea makes you high and um, if you're looking for a leaf tea which could give you this then you definitely have to go for gyokuro and with the gyokuro I personally experience this the most when I do a cold brew because then you release a little bit less of the caffeine and you release all the theanine so the theanine gets stronger in the kind of ratio with the, the mix of the water and then you really have more this feeling of this more relaxed a little bit drugged feeling but very positive it's not kind of you seeing any animals floating around or anything it's just a super easy and nice feeling you're super relaxed and everything is nice you hear the birds 
and everything is great. So that's a little bit the reason why you think that this tea actually can get you high. So thanks a lot for watching, taking your time. I guess I'll see you soon. And if you ever have a question, then feel free to put your question in the comments. And then um, I'm just gonna leave you with this. See you and bye-bye.